Okay, Lander Gold, you should know. Okay, Lander, what do you do in your role as Senior Director of Institutional Advancement at Moisha House? So as the Senior Director of Institutional Advancement for Moisha House, I am responsible for uh, engaging community leaders, uh, raising support and raising awareness for the organization along the East Coast from Toronto down to Miami. Um, and the support is raised for the local houses programming on an annual basis, as well as the organization as a whole. Okay, great. And what is something like that most people might not know about Moisha House um, that would be good for them to know? Um, yeah, so I think one of the, the biggest pieces that is unknown about Moisha House is our vast size in such a short period. Uh, we're only nine years old and we are already existing in 77 uh, houses in 17 countries. Um, and it's also unknown, people misperceive the name. Uh, Moisha House thinking it might be a more religious organization, but really we're a pluralistic Jewish organization for 22 to 30 year olds across the world, uh, engaging uh, Jewish young adults in any kind of Jewish activities from uh, like the sun, Jewish learning and community service, social gatherings, Shabbat, uh, Jewish holidays and culture. Great, and what would you say is like the biggest challenge about your job and what is the most rewarding part about it? Uh, I'd say the, the biggest challenge is that since we're so young and still so new in the Jewish community compared to many of the organizations we work with who are over 100 years old, uh, we still don't have the notoriety amongst many uh, of the community leaders and community members uh, who are outside of our target demographic, outside the 22 to 30 year old uh, demographic. Um, and where did you grow up and how does it compare to DC? Yeah, so I grew up uh, in Orlando, Florida, in a suburb of Orlando, Florida, uh, Longwood. And uh, to say it's the kind of polar opposite of here in DC would be an understatement. Uh, the Jewish community of Orlando is very small and tight-knit and everybody knows everybody. There's only a few synagogues. Um, and for me, my Jewish identity really was one in particular organization, life, uh, and engagement. And that was BBYO, where here in Washington, D.C., uh, you have countless outlets to engage in Jewish life. There's thousands of Jewish uh, community members of all age groups, um, of all demographics, uh, spread throughout the city and the suburbs. So it's, i say the biggest, uh, the biggest difference is the size um, and the countless activities that you can engage in in Jewish life here versus uh, Longwood. And what, um, you stated that you're, you're uh, very involved in Jewish organizations and non-Jewish organizations here in the Washington area. And what are some of the or other organizations that you're involved in and, um, and uh, you know, what, what kind of drew, drew you to those organizations? Yeah. Um, for me, the, the level of activity that I've taken in the organization is really uh, based on how I, um, how I got to experience the organization itself. So for me, some of the most uh, involved areas in the community um, would be with Sixth and I Synagogue, uh, with Moisha House in particular, uh, not just working here, but I get to see my peers, my friends, uh, participating on a, on a regular basis in the activities. Um, in the secular world, I'm involved with the Association of Fundraising Professionals uh, and also the University of Florida Alumni Association. Um, and uh, I take my philanthropic uh, activities to not just be that of giving a check or a donation, but also getting involved. So in that front, it's also uh, BBYO, which really that, um, along with AEPI, the International Jewish Fraternity, helped define who I am as a Jewish young adult. Now, I, I get the impression that you're a big Florida Gators fan. Yeah. Um, and you went to the University of Florida? I did. I did. I went to the University of Florida. Um, so, uh, tell me a little about your, your allegiance to, to the Gators and the University of Florida and, you know, what are some of your favorite sports, some of your favorite teams? Yeah, so my allegiance to the uh, University of Florida uh, is that I bleed orange and blue. Uh, that's not to say uh, every last thing in my life is orange and blue because my wife, now of six months, is a Ohio State Buckeye alumna. So 99.9% uh, .9 of my life is orange and blue. Uh, I give 0.1% to my wife's allegiance. Uh, I, I had <clears throat> the most tremendous and incredible time uh, when I was in college in Florida. 
Um, I have the honor and privilege of serving as president of Hillel, uh, as president of the Jewish Student Union. Uh, University of Florida boasts the largest Jewish population of any college in the world outside of Israel. So being involved in the Jewish community there is a, is a great honor. Um, I was involved in campus activities, and not to mention, uh, we got to win three national championships while I was there, two in basketball, one in football. Uh, so it was, a, it was a great time to be at the University of Florida. Jewish involvement was at, uh, as, at an incredible time. Uh, sports, uh, and not to mention the, the academics are, are top notch as well. Great. Um, so you mentioned your wife and, and you know, Mazel Tov, you recently got married. Um, how was the wedding? Did you have a honeymoon? Can you tell, talk a little bit about, uh, about yeah, that experience? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm recently married. I got married uh, November 8th of this past year of 2014. And uh, we got married here in D.C. at the Fairmont Hotel. And again, intertwining uh, my, my participation in the Jewish community, Rabbi Scott Perlow of Sixth and I um, was actually the rabbi who married us, um, surrounded by all of our closest friends and family. Um, again, people that we've been friends with from growing up in BBYO and University of Florida and Ohio State uh, and, and here in the community that we've gotten to meet. And then uh, about a month after, we went off on our honeymoon for close to three weeks to South Africa where we got to have the most incredible time on safari and in their wine country and in Cape Town on the beaches. It's one of the most beautiful places, if not the most, that uh, I've ever been. And married life now has brought uh, brought a five-month-old puppy in our lives. So not only are we newlyweds, we're also newly fur parents uh, of a five-month-old puppy. And you, what's your pup? The puppy's name? Uh, our puppy is Olive, uh, Olive Gold. So uh, she's a ten-pound Shishan Shih Tzu Bichon. And do you, do you? Where do you live here in the Washington area? I live three blocks that way. I live uh, I live here in Chinatown. And what do you what do you like about living here and working here? Uh, I like to consider <clears throat> Chinatown one of the hubs and hearts of DC right now. Um, there is no shortage of good restaurants. There's no shortage of activities to do at night. Uh, on the weekends, there's countless museums in walking distance. Uh, we're very close to the National Mall. Uh, we have a really young uh, community here of people, so we have a lot of friends who live around here, we get to uh, always have something to do. Um, and the community is just continuously growing, new restaurants are continuously opening. And it's also a three block walk uh, to work every day. And is there anything coming up? I know there's some Moisha, uh, there's a Moisha House in Capitol Hill, there's one in Addis Morgan, in Arlington, I believe. Is, are there other Moisha Houses in the area? Yeah, there's, there's also one in Montgomery County. And uh, the one in Adams Morgan actually moved about a month ago to Columbia Heights, just a few blocks down to a, a new, uh, beautiful home. Is there, is there anything, you, uh, up, any upcoming of uh, Moisha House events you'd like to publicize, people to know about, or, or where can people find out, young Jewish adults in the D.C. area, find out about interesting uh, events yeah. um, and programming at the Moisha House? Absolutely. So Moisha House, actually, all the houses host programs one to two times a week. So there's no single program that that just pops out, uh, but there's always something going on. Um, it is pluralistic, it's, it's 22 to 30, so it's hyper-focused on the age, so you know if you're going to a young adult event, you're gonna be with young adults. Uh, and, and all the information's at moishahouse.org, M-O-I-S-H-E-H-O-U-S-E.org, um, and then you can go to the house list, and uh, their calendars are there for each house, and the email addresses for the, uh, for the residents for you to get more information about the programs. I, I encourage everybody uh, to engage in Moisha House. It really is uh, one of the greatest uh, Jewish organizations there is uh, right now. And what if somebody maybe was interested in um, living in a Moisha House? How would how is that process? Uh, how does that go? Yeah. Out? So so the residents are the heart of what Moisha House uh, does. They uh, are the three to five young adults who live together and turn their home into a hub for Jewish life. They all have their own jobs or, or in grad school, um, and one to two times a week they open the home up to the community for programs, whether it's a Shabbat dinner or a learning or uh, a cooking class or a discussion, or they go out into the community because Moish House is really about uh, engaging in Jewish life throughout, uh, throughout the entire community you live in. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a resident, uh, the website moishahouse.org has an application that, uh, that can allow you 
to fill out, and if there is an opening in any of our houses, uh, or you're interested in starting a new house, the application is there to do so. Okay, well thank you. And.